I have been using this laptop for six years and it has pretty much been my main and only computer for things like 3D modeling and rendering, Illustrator, photo editing, those kinds of production software, video editing, with a third gen dual core i5, an NVIDIA GT 630M discrete graphics card, which at this price point as well, better than nothing, four gigs of RAM, a 750 gig 5400 RPM hard drive, and a 1366 by 768 TN um, thing. Later on, I gave it a few upgrades, like adding an extra four gigs of RAM, making it eight gigabytes of RAM, and the biggest upgrade of them all, a 240 gigabyte Kingston V300 SSD, and yeah, it's the bait and switch SSD. But of course, my needs for more processing power is never ending. So finally, I decided to build something that is much more powerful, much more flexible, and finally get my foot in the door of using a desktop PC, building one, customizing one. I have watched so much tutorials and just videos about desktop PCs where me with honeycomb is just not enough. I want to experience it myself and use it as my main system and not just say a pretty much obsolete demo thing. So. I have watched enough Scrap the Yard Wars and Tech yes City and other YouTubers where they buy something used and then just upgrade this part, replace that part, etc, etc, to get the best bang for the buck. And because I wasn't able to bring Honeycomb 2 with me, it also has to come with the case. Which brings me to the Dell Optiplex 7010. It is actually not bad. I mean, I gotta admit, for an office focused pre built, it actually kind of looks pretty nice. It's clean looking, it's sleek, and it's standard micro ATX inside. It is not a weirdo proprietary thingy like what would HP or I think even Lenovo who would, would pull off. This one actually has pretty standardized parts. So I bought this thing on eBay and this thing packs a Core i5-3470, which is the same generation processor as the machine is trying to replace. But in this generation of Intel processors, the laptops are only dual core hyper-threaded. And of course, it's a laptop, so it's a little thermally constrained, so it can't hold its 2.9 gigahertz turbo continuously. This is a desktop Core i5 using the LGA 1155 socket. It has four proper cores. This thing can hold its 3.4 gigahertz all-core turbo with ease. I wish it's overclockable though, but the BIOS doesn't support overclocking. It also packs eight gigabytes of RAM, but two gig, two gig, two gig, two gig. SK Hynix, SK Hynix, Samsung, Nanya. And thus the reason why I have these two extra RAM sticks with me right now. And I'm actually planning to just sell these. It also comes with a 500 gigabyte hard disk drive, which And of course, this is still a standard computer. It doesn't run with magic. And it comes with a Dell 275 watt power supply. Oh wait, no, that's not it. This, this is a Dell 275 watt power supply. And for 275 watts, it's, it actually has pretty, actually has a decent amount of weight. And it's actually fairly standardized. It has a standard 24 pin power. It has four SATA connectors, and it has a four pin ATX 12 volt power connector for the CPU. So much did I spend on this thing? 95 bucks. That's a really good value because I also kind of need the case and I am not willing to spend 20 bucks on an ugly AF case. 
So if you are Brian from Takia City, I'm pretty sure you're gonna find this thing at a better price. Or if you know a local deal where they're selling off school or office computers by the bulk, you can definitely find this for much, much cheaper. So now we're talking about the quirks and features of this Dell Optiplex. There are certain things that are definitely standard about this computer. I mean, first of all, it is a standard micro ATX layout inside. Micro ATX motherboard, um, standard ATX power supply, but there are some iffy bits. Uh, the SATA connectors are actually in the way for cards that are longer than 160 millimeters. Unlike on any other motherboards where the SATA connectors stay the f out of the way. So I have to use something like a PCIe to SATA card as well as a right angle SATA connector. So this machine also has four USB 3 ports and the front USB 3 header is standard actually. But like the SATA connectors, it's also in the way. But because of that USB 3 connector in the way, you're limited to cards that are as long as 230 millimeters. It also has this thing called a case intrusion sensor thing which is really just a button that is has to make sure that it's pushed down. It just put tape on it and it'll be fine. And then it has this one extra connector with a wire with a thing connected to the front. That is its air temperature sensor, but it doesn't measure the temperature inside the case. It is measuring the temperature for the intake. The power LED is also not using those little hard to connect connectors on any on a typical computer but it instead it uses a little block connector like a five or six pin block that plugs straight into it also the power led over here actually has two colors white and amber originally it has this plastic latch thing that you kind of eventually i just got rid of it completely and then i replaced it with just good old screws also, of course, being a sleek office PC, it of course wouldn't have like a side panel window or anything like that. Instead, you get a nice door handle. So this is a Corsair CX450M power supply, which by the name suggests is 450 watts. And on the 12 volt rail, is also 450 watts. Yes, this power supply uses DC to DC on the minor rails. And being semi-modular, I can take the Molex harness and then throw it straight into the box where it belongs. So yeah, this power supply I got for $49 on Amazon new. Next upgrade is the RAM. So I had to remove the odd ones out, leaving the two 2 gig SK Hynix RAM in here. And then back on eBay, I bought two 4 gigabyte DDR3 SK Hynix 1600 megahertz RAM to add into it, giving it a weird ass configuration of um, 12 gigabytes of RAM. So before I bought this SK Hynix RAM, I already ordered beforehand the same setup for uh, two 4 gig sticks. So what I did is I just plugged this one alone, not turning on, and then the two and three flashing here. Now I plugged in the second stick. Okay. There we go. One alcohol swab. Please work. Aww. So, update. One of the sticks is defective and one is okay. Next upgrade is the one little thing that is hiding down here is a crucial MX500 500 gigabyte SSD. Yes, I bought a 500 gigabyte SSD for $70 new on Amazon, but I needed a 500 gig SSD. So it's configured in a way so that 150 gigabytes is partitioned for Windows. And then the rest is for games, which just happens to be Minecraft, video project files, 
photo project files, even on a low-end machine, if it, even if it's just 1080p editing, there is a responsiveness difference between hard editing off a hard drive and then editing off an SSD. This is something that what my, one of my friends would say, beefy delicious. This is a Sapphire RX 570 that was used for mining that I bought for 64 bucks plus $15 shipping, $79 for an RX 574 gig. I honestly don't need this much GPU power. I could have spent less in something like a 560, but the price of this thing, the value you can get, this graphics card, if you get lucky and hope that the one that you get is not dead, and yet, the seller was really upfront that this GPU was used for crypto mining. Yet, I had no problems with it. It was a little dusty. Also, this GPU quite runs quite hot, but in episode 2, I was able to easily fix that. And really, all I need this GPU for is GPU acceleration in video editing and Minecraft. With shaders at 1080p60. It actually maxes out the GPU when it runs Minecraft with shaders. So actually, now I'm thinking about it, it's a great buy. And this specific GPU, no, Sapphire Pulse RX 574 gig is exact. Guess how long it is? The length of this GPU, 230 millimeters. This is possibly the biggest graphics card you could possibly fit in the Dell Optiplex 7010. In fact, the spec sheet says it actually shouldn't even fit. We're going to make it fit. I know it fits. It's supposed to. Oh, there we go. You could also see that there's another hard drive here in the middle. This 2.5 inch, 750 gigabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive. And then finally, the last upgrade. This GPU is quite warm. So anyway, this is an 120 millimeter Arctic P12 fan. This fan is actually plugged into a SATA to three pin fan adapter. And that is pretty much everything about Tension PC for now. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about thermals and some janky, mo janky stuff that I kind of had to do. <laughs> I got a bit creative in this. So, liker's gonna like, haters gonna hate, subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and thank you for watching. Hmm, what else do I have to talk about? Oh, there's a reason why I named it Tension, but I guess I'm just gonna leave that to uh, next episode. This video is already long enough. I'm starting to reach the recording limits of my camera, actually.